No one could have guessed. How could they? It was just a vacant home, surrounded by so many other vacant, dilapidated, falling down homes. It was just another place in the city of Detroit, suffering from urban blight and decay. And there he sat. There he sat, looking out the basement window. The decay had brought in all manner of newcomers. As homeowners moved away and decent people fled, these great forests of vacant homes became places for the homeless to crash, for addicts to overdose, for alcoholics to binge, for gang members to hang out for their initiations, to hide out from the authorities, to do all manner of depravity. They frequently left corpses of their victims randomly in vacant homes. The bitter irony of it all, the bitter irony of it all. It had been his desperate hope to spare lives when he had lost control of his vehicle, when he was crashing. He tried to avoid places. He looked for life forms. He came into the yard and back against the tree there lay the rubble of his ship, unidentifiable in a pile of other random junk which had accumulated. Here he was, and nobody even noticed. He crawled, crawled for shelter, crawled through the gaping hole, to the outside entry to the basement of old. He crawled through a table, waiting for help, hoping for help, begging to the empty air. Now here he lay, staring out the basement window. Just another corpse. Like the dead and dying homes around him in the rotting neighborhoods, he was just another corpse. No help had come, and he lay here petrified now. What was left of his small, scaly frame, looking out the window. The dirty, dingy, dilapidated window of a dying, decaying structure. This is what he found. After such a journey, after such travels, piercing through the dark veil of space, searching for that little green and blue ball they had spied from afar, looking to meet the life form that lived on this planet, hoping against hope that they could make contact, understanding communication, and the malfunction, and the crash. Finding out how small he was compared to them, crashing his mighty ship that was no larger than apparently a small automobile that they would drive. And now the ruins of it lay even more alien and unrecognizable in a pile by a tree in the backyard of a vacant house, and he lay where he had crawled. If any drug addict or alcoholic or gang member should stumble through this basement for some god-awful reason, they might not even notice his body. Not human in its smallness, not human in its scaliness, would they mistake him for an ancient toy or a dilapidated puppet. His people would never find him. These people would never find him, not the real him. How wasteful it all seemed to cross the cosmic divide in the hopes of communication and reaching out to die in an accident, to die unnoticed in a world that apparently was accustomed to leaving things unnoticed. Here he would lay and rot and decay and petrify. Here he would stay for eternity, apparently. His achievement, well, such as it was, known only to him. This was what he gave his life for. This dilapidated, smelly old basement. To die here with no dignity.